welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me or who've never been here before, welcome. My name's Rachel. I'm the owner of The Eclectic Cottage here in Spokane, Washington. Happy Tuesday. I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, I know for me, it was a little bit busy. My husband and I didn't really go on a thrift run on Sunday like normal, uh, but we did go to Goodwill uh, because we were looking for a microwave. So we hit three of our local Goodwills and uh, in the search of a new microwave because our microwave died on Saturday. I uh, didn't end up finding a microwave at any of the Goodwills. I did find a few little things that I will show you coming up later in the week. Um, and I'm actually going to be moving, I believe, my thrift hauls and my second video of the week to Fridays going forward. So watch for that on Friday. And uh, then yesterday I spent my whole day kind of working on my website. And the great news is that I finally got all of my DIY products available on my web shop now online. So if you go to my website, it's www.theeclecticcottagespokane.com. Uh, you can see my website and then up, up top there's a little menu and there's a place where you can go shopping and so I have all of my DIY products on there and almost all of my Sweet Pickens line on as well so uh, if you're local there's a local pickup option and there's also a local delivery option for $10 I will bring your order to you so uh, take a look at that if you get a chance if you're interested at all uh, my goal is hopefully by the end of the year to have uh, more of my actual inventory available online and to start actually shipping things out so little by little it has been a long process learning how to um, do some of these things online I am by no means a web developer <laughs> so um, I've had to learn kind of as I've gone along and so it's a it's a process and I'm getting there slowly but surely but I'm really excited to actually receive my very first online order and get it filled and shipped uh, that's one of my goals for this year so <laughs> hopefully that happens I'm excited so anyway for today's video it is Tuesday so normally I give you some sort of a flip or a DIY or trash to treasure and today's I would consider a DIY and I decided I really needed to make some signs for spring I didn't have any left in here so uh, that's what I did for this video I made eight different signs um, for most of them are spring signs there are a couple that are pretty basic one says cottage and one says welcome um, but other than that they're they're uh, all kind of spring related so I love the colors that I picked out um, it was a lot of fun making them designing them so I hope you enjoy the video and it's definitely a little bit different format than what I what I normally do so uh, just stick with me and uh, check out the signs that I made for you for this week's video so these are the pieces that we're going to be using in today's video the magazine rack ends one thrifted metal sign two thrifted wood signs a chunk of old shelving and a couple sides from an old dresser drawer so before I could get started making signs, I decided I wanted to use the two ends of this magazine rack. So here I am just getting started and taking this baby apart. And all you do is just unscrew those little knobs and they come off and they leave the screw in the wood. So you have to go back in with a pair of pliers and unscrew all of those. And then I usually put them together and I just set those knobs aside just in case I use them someday. Uh, and the sides are always kind of a little wonky. They're never put together very well. So I usually take them all apart, put some glue in the holes, and then put all the little spindles back in each side and then put them together. And these I'm just going to set aside. I'm not going to use those for today's video, but they will be in a future video. Clean up my glue mess and then it's on to the bottom. And the bottom always has this little strip of wood that's attached with some little bitty nails. So I just kind of taken those off and then tapping those nails out so I can remove them. And then that piece will make a good sign for another project down the road as well. So there you have all the pieces. 
Now the thing that's missing here, you might notice, are the handle and one of the strips of wood, which I did come up with an idea for, and that will also be in a future video. So next up, I am filling the holes on this thing. And so I flip them over to the back and put masking tape down. And I am just using Durham's water putty and I mix it up kind of thick and then I'm filling all of those holes. I'm leaving the two in the top so that they can be hung on the wall or on a nail at some point. And then I take my little trowel and I push that putty all the way down through, but I leave a little mound on the front just because I've found that it tends to shrink. Uh, and when you sand it, you want a nice flat surface. Next up, I took the four signs or five signs actually that needed sanded out and gave them a good sanding. The two sides of the drawers were just really rough. This metal sign and this one with the fruit on it and the gray one, I basically sanded just because I didn't want a hint of any of those uh, previous signs showing through my paint. Once the water putty was dry, I took the two magazine rack ends outside, removed the masking tape from the back, sanded the back just to make sure there weren't any lumps, flipped them over and gave them each a really good sanding on the front just to make sure that everything was nice and smooth and ready for paint. Then it was inside to clean everything up, remove all the sawdust and the dust from the Durham water putty. I decided I wanted these two to have a coat of black paint as the base and the easiest way to do that was just to take them outside and spray them down with a really good coat of Rust-Oleum 2X matte black spray paint. Just a really simple way to give them a base coat so that when I distress that black will shine through. Next I started painting all of my different pieces. I had eight pieces to paint so I picked four colors and did two in each. So I started with uh, DIY's Farm Fresh. I moved on to DIY's Little Black Dress, then Faded Burlap, and last but not least, White Swan. Now for the most part, most of these were nice and clean on the back, so I didn't paint the backs of them, except for the two magazine rack ends because I had to sand the backs of them so they looked a little cruddy. So I gave them each one good coat of paint on the back. And then the uh, sign that was originally gray also got one coat of paint on its back. Next on the agenda was distressing. So I took my tool and this has some really old 220 grit sandpaper in it that really isn't gritty at all anymore, but it's good enough to kind of knock any chunks off and just smooth the surface out just a bit on all of these pieces. And then I went back with my damp shop towel and some sandpaper and went around the edges and just distressed all of these pieces. The two pieces that were routered, I really concentrated on getting those routered edges. Uh, it really, it makes a difference. It makes those edges really stand out and just add some character and depth to the piece. Once that's done, the next and final step in getting all of these ready for their stencils is to seal them. So the reason I seal before I stencil, there's a couple reasons. Number one, it helps to keep the paint in place so that my stencil uh, vinyl doesn't peel the paint back up off of the piece and it also acts as a barrier so if I accidentally mess up and get paint somewhere where it's not supposed to be it's a heck of a lot easier to wipe back off so every place that got paint is getting one good coat of big top and here are all of my pieces all sanded cleaned painted distressed and sealed and ready for stencils Here's a look at what my screen looks like before I print any of my signs. Everybody's just sitting there waiting for their turn to get printed. And I'm gonna just give you a brief run through of what it looks like to actually make a sign. So the first step is cutting out the piece of stencil vinyl that you need, length and width. And once that's done, you just place it on your cutting mat and make sure and smooth it down so there aren't any bubbles or wrinkles or anything. And then you run it through your Cricut. 
And of course your Cricut machine just does all the work. It cuts everything out for you. So once you take it out, I take my little weeding tool and just weed all of the letters out. And the next step is putting some transfer tape on the front. So basically I just lay it down and then cut the transfer tape around the stencil. And next you peel the back off of the vinyl um, and just make sure that you go slow and that all your pieces stick. Now here you'll see I'm using my sleeve to try and make it a little less sticky so I don't have to worry about it peeling up paint when I finally remove it. So next, once it's down where you want it and you smooth it all down, you peel the transfer tape, tape off and if you've done everything properly, you should have nothing left on your piece but your stencil vinyl. So I normally go through and just kind of smooth it out. Now on this one, I kind of messed up and I did not cut my vinyl quite long enough and even though the W was there, there just really wasn't anything to protect the end. So I just put a piece of masking tape over it and that was good. I go over each letter twice with my paint. And for this one, I'm using DIY's crinoline. And I, oh, for the actual unit that I'm using to, to stencil with is just a makeup sponge. I get them at the Dollar Tree. So once that's done, you just peel off your vinyl and weed out the excess and then you're finished. So I did this same procedure for all of the signs. This one was one of the white ones and I stenciled cottage on that and peel, just being really careful to not peel too hard uh, and end up ripping up some of your paint and weed out the rest. And there's that one all done. This is probably one of my favorites. This one says fresh herbs. And here I am just you doing two more good coats of stencil paint on it. I'm using DIY's crinoline for that one again. And then weeding out all the little itty bits of, of uh, vinyl. And then there, there's that one finished. And then onto this one. This is a metal sign. So I have to be really careful when I peel that uh, tape back up. But it came up real easy and this one turned out really good as well now for this next one i had a bubble in the vinyl when it was going through the cricket that i didn't see and when it cut everything out the v was messed up so i covered up the v portion of the sign with some masking tape and just stenciled as usual uh, and then once i got everything weeded and taken care of I reprinted just the V and got that all cut out, cut it down to size with my scissors and laid it down where it needed to go, surrounded it with some masking tape just so that I didn't accidentally um, get paint all over everything else. And then I went about stenciling in that V. So I'm just taking my little makeup sponge and pouncing that paint on and then peeling that little bit of stencil back and thankfully it turned out really good. So we're down to my last few signs. This one I sanded a little bit before I put the stencil vinyl down just to make sure I didn't pull up any paint when I peeled it up. So and the image here I actually purchased on Etsy. It's one of the two out of the eight that I didn't make myself. This one, I forgot to take any footage of me stenciling it, so but here I am weeding it. And then this last one is probably my favorite one just because I like this saying so much. Uh, but I'm just going to show you step by step again how to get the stencil ready to be printed. Uh, cut it out the size that you need, put it on your stencil mat, run it through your Cricut, take it out, weed it. Uh, then attach your transfer tape, peel the backing off your transfer tape, and then place your piece on uh, down onto whatever surface you're stenciling. So uh, once your piece is down, then peel the transfer tape back and you're left with just your vinyl stencil. And I usually use my little makeup sponge and put two light coats of paint over all of my stencil then peel it up weed it and you're done 
So the last step in all of this is to seal the stencils. And what I chose to use for this step was Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Spray. And the reason I'm using a spray is because in the past I've tried to use a brush on and every once in a while it will reactivate that DIY paint and smear it. I find it's a lot more, a lot easier, I guess, to just spray it on and then I don't have to worry about any smudging or smearing in the end. So here I'm just kind of showing you the can and I went over every single piece with a coat of the matte spray. Now finally we're done with everything except embellishments. So for this welcome sign I had this berry garland and I wanted to use it for the O. So I just took several strands, wrapped them kind of around my hand, used some wire to wire it all together and just made a little wreath and hot glued it on. For the two um, that are the ends of the magazine rack, I love the little handles and I like embellishing those. And so here I am just wrapping some kind of thick jute, gluey, gluing it in place as I go with some hot glue and just getting it kind of wrapped around that handle. Cutting off the excess. And once that's done, I made just a cute little lace ribbon that I glued down. Cut off the tassels. And then added a little piece of bling. And then that one was done. And then this last one, I did the same kind of effect. I just took smaller jute, glued it down, wrapped the handle. And instead of making a lace ribbon, I just wrapped the jute with some lace glued that on and then in the center I added one of those blingy brooches that I have. So it's cut off in the excess and the blingy brooch. And then this is my last final sign and then, then they are all finally done. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it was a little bit different than my normal uh, thrift flip videos. And so honestly, it was a little more difficult for me to edit. I was really worried about how it would all kind of flow together. So hopefully it translated well um, and you actually enjoyed watching it. That's my hope. Um, and if you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't already, I love it if you would subscribe to my channel and then hit the little notification bell and that will let you know when I upload new content. Um, I have been doing it currently uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. I am probably, in fact, I am going to switch that to Tuesdays and Fridays going forward. So my next video will be released on Friday. Not sure exactly what it's gonna look like yet. I have a little itty bitty uh, thrift haul, but um, not really enough to constitute an entire video. So we'll see, there'll probably be something else added on there as well. <laughs> so anyway, that's it from here for today. Um, I would love to hear which of the signs was your favorite. So please comment below and let me know. And I hope to see you back here on Friday. Have a great rest of your week and I'll see you then. Thanks and bye.